Hey, how's it going everybody? My name is Caden, and I'm a man who owns two launch pads. Now you may ask yourself, Caden, why do you have two launch pads? And the reason is all because of velocity. Now when I'm talking about velocity, I'm not talking about the incredible rate at which I am flying through outer space. I'm talking about how hard you play an instrument. Maybe the best way to illustrate velocity is through the use of a guitar, since that's the only physical real instrument that I actually own. So you can see over here that if I strum a chord, it has a, a very mellow sound to it, right? Strumming it softly. But if I really give it the beans, you can hear that it has a much more aggressive sound. Okay, so the Launchpad 2, which I bought way back in high school, does not have velocity. That means that if I hit it softly, like I'm petting a kitten, it sounds exactly the same as if I slam down like I'm attacking a cockroach. So I ended up deciding to get the Launchpad Pro, which does support velocity, and it also has another cool feature, MIDI out to control external synths. So this really got me thinking, could I make a simple one-man band live setup with my launch pads and synths? I already had Nanoloop, which is a really nifty Game Boy cartridge that could do chords and things. I already had Volk Keys, which could do melodies. The only thing that I was missing is something that I could do drums with. Sure, Nanoloop can do drums, but if I wanted to drown the chords and some reverb, that would all get applied to the drums too, and drums with a ton of reverb can sound pretty bad in a lot of cases. Now, standalone hardware drum machines in their cheapest form run about 150 US dollars. Now, I'm pretty cheap, so I thought, what if I just build one? The idea was pretty simple. I'd just take the launch pad, use that for the interface, and use some sort of single board computer or microcontroller to handle the sample triggering and interfacing with other gear. Okay, so let me take a step back into the virtual realm for a second and explain exactly how I wanted this to work. This is a virtual drum sequencer in Propellerhead Reason. And what this basically allows me to do is sequence drums. So you can see I have a bunch of different drums over there on the left side, kick, snare, etc. And I have a bunch of cells on the right. I can click into these cells and tell the computer when and where I want to place drum beats. And I can program in a beat just like this. This is the workflow that I wanted to be able to mimic on the launch pad. I really wanted to be able to load in eight separate audio files, one for each row, and be able to program at a resolution of eighth notes, giving me eight notes per bar. Okay, so I really wanted to be able to have multiple bars worth of drum hits, and since moving the display seemed difficult, I ended up just stealing a feature from Nanoloop. Now, Nanoloop has this feature called Step Pause, and what that basically means is that I can trigger a step once, and that will tell it I want this step to play every single bar. Or I can trigger it in a different way. In the launch pad case, just press the button again, and that will tell the sequencer that I want it to play every other bar, giving me a lot more variation. And honestly, that's really it. All I needed to do was now figure out how to trigger samples and which board to use and all that other fancy stuff. But let's get started. With the plans all laid out, I bought a TNC 4.1 and got to work. Things were relatively easy because the Teensy 4.1 has USB host, which means that it can natively read from USB devices without having to code everything in yourself. This meant that all I needed to do was connect this USB cable to these four pins and I could plug the launch pad right into it. The Teensy also has a pretty robust audio library setup and a relatively simple audio board, both of which I would be taking full advantage of. Okay, so the first thing I did was write some code to interpret the button presses and store them in an array. Pressing once saves the light as green, pressing again saves it as blue, and pressing yet again turns it back off. The green lights represent steps where the drum will play every bar, and the blue lights represent steps where the drum will play every other bar. Once I got this working well, it was time to start focusing on the actual drum machine part. I added some files to an SD card, named and formatted them properly, and got them playing. The next thing I needed to do was to focus on making it syncable so that I could actually get it to play in time with my other electronic gear. The first step to this was to make a cable so that I could actually sync Nanoloop with the drum machine. After I did that, I verified that the cable worked by syncing Nanoloop with my Volca keys. After that worked, then I just needed to connect it up to my oscilloscope so that I could actually see what the waveform of a proper sync signal looked like. It's roughly a square wave, which means that I can just use the digital read function on the TNC to check if the pin's voltage is high. And if it is, move on to the next step. So I booted it up and things worked, sort of. It would start in time, and then it would fall out of time and side back into time, and this process would repeat. Basically what was happening, as I found out thanks to a post on the Arduino forums by Grumpy Mike, I was double counting the waveform. I was seeing that it was high, 
and then immediately stepping. Then I would see that it was high again immediately after before the pin could return back to the low voltage and I would step again. So this was a relatively simple fix. All I needed to do was just check if the previous read was high and if it was, don't do anything. But even though now it didn't double step and it stayed in time, it was sometimes slightly delayed, like there was a sort of syncopation thing going on. I tried a bunch of things to fix this and ended up just mapping this corner button labeled volume to a 100 milliseconds delay, and that seemed to nudge it back in place most of the time. As a side note, pressing any of these other buttons will crash the Teensy, and I'm not quite sure why. I had initially wanted to use these for like volume control or for selective muting, but since they crash it, I couldn't implement that. I'm not sure if it's an issue with my launch pad, I'm not buying another one to test, and I couldn't find any solutions in my code, so this is just a bug we're going to have to live with for right now. But with that band-aid fix on the final timing bug, it was time to finish this project. I had really only three things left to do. I had to fix the audio so that it could play multiple samples at once, I had to make a mixer to mix all of my instruments together, and I had to finish an enclosure for the project. Getting the Teensy to play multiple audio samples was done using the Teensy Audio System Design Tool, which allowed me to digitally mix multiple wave players into a single output. This is a really, really simple, cool tool that I'd really like to play around with more sometime, but this is really all I needed for this project. Next up, I had to make a mixer so that I could actually get all the audio data from the jam session testing into my two input interface. Now, in theory, mixers are super simple. All I need are some jacks to potentiometers, wire them up, bam, you got a mixer. However, in practice, it ends up being a little bit more complicated than that. This mixer has a lot of problems, and honestly, I probably should have just bought one. But it does work well enough for the test, so I'm just going to roll with it and not spend any more money. The last thing I needed to do before we could get to the testing was to make an enclosure for the Teensy. Or I could skip that step and just leave it exposed on the table. That works too. Speaking of the testing, the chords are being provided by Nanoloop, the Volk Keys is doing the melodies, being controlled by the Launchpad Pro, and the Teensy Drum Machine is doing the drums. Let's hear how it sounds. Now that we've heard it in action, what's the verdict? It is a drum machine. It works like a drum machine should. Does it have flaws? Of course. It crashes when you press buttons. It crashes when you don't press buttons. It needs a clock input in the first place. There's the desyncing. You can't adjust the levels of individual drums. I could fix a lot of these things. But what this experiment has shown me is that I'm not particularly interested in this type of non-computer jamming. I've gotten to this point over the past couple of years using Reason where I can just sort of jam and write all in the software. And honestly, it's got a lot of pros. It doesn't take up a whole table's worth of space. Its cables can't get tangled. I can edit and perfect my songs after the fact. And I can use a whole bunch of instruments and effect types that would be way, way too expensive for me to afford in real life. I understand that a lot of people really, really like this type of non-computer jamming. And if that's you, awesome. Feel free to poke around in the code, edit it, modify it, make it better, whatever. It's all up on GitHub and it's gonna be linked in the description. You might have to tweak some stuff if you're not using a Launchpad 2 because I haven't tested it with like a Mini or a Mark 1 or a Pro. So you might have to poke around in the code a little bit to make it work, but feel free to do so, I give you full permission. With all that said, thank you so much for making it this far. This video took a lot of time to make and I really hope it was worth it. If you want to see some more of my content, please check out the favorites playlist in the description. And if you're interested in seeing some more, maybe consider subscribing. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.